there we go again. Hi everybody, it's Janet with Fruit of the Vine Art Studio here, and it's Wednesday, the first Wednesday in July. So, we are going to start our Vacation Bible School tonight, and I am so looking forward to this. This is Fruit of the Vine Art Studio's July Vacation Bible School. Welcome and thank you for being here with me. Let me get this going right here. I'm going to set this off to the side. When you join me, I'd love it if you just say, hey, let me know that you're here. I'm, I appreciate you joining me tonight. Now, this is, an, an annual, this is an annual event. It happens every July on Wednesdays. Okay, so each Wednesday, I'm going to join you here during this month at 8 p.m. And I'm going to tell you a story from the Bible. Now, when I was a kid... I remember going to vacation Bible school in the summer and the stories were always so entertaining and so wonderful and the best part of it was that you got to make a craft and you got to take the craft home with you. And then every time you saw that craft, it reminded you of the story. So that's what we're doing here. You know, we had so much do so much fun doing those crafts when I was a kid in vacation Bible school. It really created strong, wonderful memories for me. And I want to join you and your family and create warm, wonderful, strong memories of Bible stories with you. Now, last year, I offered art kits and told stories. I told stories about Noah. I told the story of Daniel in the lion's den, Noah's ark, Joseph in the many colored coat. I told, um, let's see, Jonah and the big fish. Uh, David and Goliath, Gideon's Trumpet. I had six different episodes and they were all really exciting. And if you're interested in watching those, all you have to do is go to the video section on this page and you can find Season 1 Vacation Bible School and you can watch every one of those. They're um, always available to you. But I felt that sort of like offering the art kit after I told the story almost defeated the purpose. You didn't get to create the craft with me while we told the story. You just looked at the craft while I was telling the story. So this year, I decided I was going to change things up a little bit. And instead of just offering the art kit, what I'm doing each week is I'm publishing a tracer for you. And all you have to do is go onto the page, find the tracer, print it out. You can print it out and do this on paper. You can print it out and you can put it on canvas. Now, this is a very intricate one. Yes, I, I do know that. It, it's very detailed. But it's going to be fun to create. So if you just printed it out, I don't care what you want to create with. Get yourself some crayons. Get yourself some markers. Use anything that you want to create with me. I don't care how you color yours in. I just want you to join me, listen to the story while we, while we color it in, and then um, that way you'll have this to keep with you, and every time you'll see it, you're going to remember the story of these three faithful men. Okay? Now, tomorrow morning I am going to put the tracer up for Ruth and Naomi. That will be next Wednesday's story. It's going to be about Ruth and Naomi. So you'll have a full week to print your tracer off and put it on anything that you want to paint or just paint it on whatever you print it on. Color it in. It doesn't have to be painted, like I said. So that'll be tomorrow. Anyway, I'm really glad that you're joining me tonight for this really awesome event, and I cannot wait to get started with you. So, without any further ado, I'm going to tilt down the camera here, and I'm going to get my canvas started, and let me, I'm trying to get this to stay tilted in the right direction. I don't know why it's turning so oddly. I think it's trying to break on me. Okay, anyway, this here is our template tonight and the story that we're going to talk about is called three faithful men now in this story as i said now i want you guys you can use any colors that you want to create this if you um, aren't really sure what you're looking at what you're looking at is this right here is the outside of a furnace this is all flames inside of this furnace and there's four men in the, in the furnace, inside the flames. This is King, King Nebuchadnezzar. And he's looking into the furnace. This is the floor down here, and this is the wall in the background. So that's what we're looking at. Now anyway, on to our story, and I'm going to go ahead and get started painting. Now, this is the story of three faithful men, and these three faithful men 
have funny names. Now, there's also a king in this story, and the king has a funny name, too. But we're not going to get off subject in regards to that. Um, this, this isn't about people's names. This is going to be about actions and how our actions show our true heart. Now, you've probably heard the saying that actions speak louder than words. What does that mean? Well, we're going to talk about that. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with this background right back here where the flames are. Okay? So I am going to get out some red paint. Let me get that come out of there. That didn't come out very well. There we go. And I'm going to add just a, I'm going to use my little flat brush and I'm going to add just a little bit of water to my paint because I want it to be thin enough to where I can see it in the background still, so that when I paint this in right here, I can still see everything in the background. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. Now, I'm just going to do this right back here, and I'm going to try to avoid the little, the men's faces back here, but I'm just painting this all red right back in here inside the furnace where the fire is, is flaming hot, and it is red. Okay, now, um, you know, what, what we're talking about now, it, it, we're talking about sometimes that actions speak louder than words. What exactly do we mean by that, you know? What it means is that um, sometimes the way you behave actually shows what's really going on inside of your mind and in your heart. Now, it means that sometimes just, just saying that you believe in God isn't actually enough. Sometimes you have to show that you believe in God and that you trust God with your actions, with your behaviors, okay? And that's what's going to happen in this story. Um, sometimes you have to stand up for your beliefs and not just follow the crowd and do something just because everybody else is doing it or do something because someone tells you to behave in a way that, that, that you know is wrong. The way that we behave lets God know what's really going on in our minds and in our hearts, okay? So I want you to think about that as we talk about this story. And I'm just gonna keep painting in the fire and the flames back here with this red while I tell you the story, okay? So you just keep painting along with me. Now, the three men in this story, they could have done just that. When they were told to do something that they knew was really wrong, they could have just done what they were told and not really meant it in their heart. They could have done that. They could have just went along with everybody else at that time, but they didn't. They stood up for their beliefs. And they did what they thought was right. They trusted in God and they trusted in God's promises and they relied on God's word. So anyway, now let's, let, let's get on with the story. I'm just talking away here and not really telling you the story at this point. Let me tell you the story because the story is really good. Let me get a little more red paint on here. Okay, this story, this story starts at a time when other tribes and nations were very jealous of the people in Israel. One day, terrible news was delivered to the city of Jerusalem. The king of Babylon, this guy right here, his name was Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar had commanded his army to capture the city of Jerusalem. And they were on their way to do just that at that very moment. And even though the people of Jerusalem had just received the news, there wasn't even enough time for everyone to escape. The city was captured by King Nebuchadnezzar, by his army, and many of the citizens that lived in Jerusalem were taken back to Babylon as prisoners. Now, among the prisoners, there was some young princes. 
young prince, a young prince that came from Jerusalem. There were three young princes, and their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, yes, those are kind of funny sounding names, aren't they? But back in those days, they had all kinds of funny sounding names. So, you know, that's just some more of those. The king's name is Nebuchadnezzar, and the three guys are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, now anyway, these are the three princes. Those are their names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, because they were princes, they were brought before King Nebuchadnezzar when they were brought to Babylon. And, and before long, the, the, uh, the king knew that these princes were, were really very smart, clever young men. I'm going to put this right in between. I'm trying to get right in between these people here with this red paint. Okay, anyway, the king knew that all that those princes were very smart young men, so he actually gave them jobs that were very important in his kingdom. And they were actually really good workers, and they did just what they were told, and the king became, the, he, he became to rely upon them. He trusted them that they would do as they were told, that they were always, they were good workers. They were willing to, you know, to do as they were asked to do. They obeyed. They had good attitudes. They were good workers. He gave them very important jobs. And now this went on for a long time. They were with the king for a very long time. Years passed. And... The jobs that they, they were given, they were really good at. The king was happy with them. But one day, King Nebuchadnezzar, he decided... Now, King Nebuchadnezzar didn't believe in the real God. We need to say that. King Nebuchadnezzar was from Babylon, and he believed in other kinds of gods and golden images and things like that. So he wanted to build a golden statue to his gods. So he got a bunch of gold and he made this huge statue. And I'm talking huge, guys. This thing was 90 feet tall. Now, you're probably thinking, 90 feet? How big's 90 feet? Well, just, just, just to get this in perspective, I want you to think about taking 15 men and standing them one on top of the other's shoulders. 15 big grown men. Hey, Carol, I just happened to look up to see who was with me tonight. I appreciate you being here. Hi, Steve. I appreciate you being here also. Okay, um, back to our story. Okay, so the King Nebuchadnezzar, he built this great big statue, and it was 90 feet tall, about the height of 15 grown men. Okay, and it was out there in the sun, and it was shining really bright, and you could see it all over the place, and you know, King Nebuchadnezzar just thought it was the coolest, coolest looking big statue, and he thought that everybody in the kingdom was going to love the statue, and that they would all be so happy, and they would uh, want to worship this big statue, okay? He was so proud of his big golden image that he made, he invited all of the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges, the treasurers, all the rulers of the province to come to a great big party that he was going to have. And he was going to hold it and he was going to have a dedication for his big statue for everybody to come, okay? And, and when everybody got there, the king ordered everybody to worship his new statue. All of a sudden, there was a big announcement. There was a heralder. As they stood before that image, there was a heralder, heralder a heralder. That's a person who, who yells out very loudly. And he said, Oh, to you it is commanded, O oh people, all nations and languages. When you hear the sound of the coronet, the flute and the harp, and all kinds of music, you will fall down and you will worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up, and whosoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a burning, fiery furnace within the same hour. 
Now, the problem with this, guys, is God, God doesn't want us to worship anything other than him or anyone other than him. After all, he, he is God. He, he made us, and he loves us so much. And, I mean, he loves us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, here to earth to die for us just so that we could be saved. God cares about every little bitty thing in our life. He doesn't want us to pray or worship to some gold idol that isn't real. That thing can't answer your prayers. It can't help you in any single way. Worshiping a big old pile of gold is just silly. It can't hear, it can't see, and it can't care about anything or anyone. Okay, now I've got, we've got that, you know, just just so you know, we want to remember that, 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 that you don't want to worship some silly idol. You don't want to be worshiping money and gold and, and and false gods and stuff like that. You don't do that. But that back in those times, there was plenty of people who did things like that. They made bunches of golden images and stuff. Now people get trapped up and stuff with like worship and money and thinking other things are so important that really are not. Really, really are not. Money's helpful, but it's just a tool in life. I'm gonna use a little bit more of this red while we're going around right here. I'm gonna put some of that red here in his in his crown. I'm going to make these little jewels right here. Red in the king's crown. Well, I've got my red out. Okay, we're going to get right back to the story here in just a moment. I'm going to get his little tongue right here inside of his mouth. Let's see, we can make those a different color. Let's get right inside of this guy's mouth. Who do you think this guy is? Which one do you think is which? We know three of the people. Do we know three of the people? We don't even know what's going on in the story yet, do we? We just know that the King Nebuchadnezzar has built a golden image and he wants everybody to worship this golden image. So he brings them all together and he says to them, when you hear the coronet and you hear the flute and you hear the harp uh, and you hear all kinds of music, everybody's going to stop what they're doing and they're going to fall down and worship. So the next time the music played, everybody did stop what they were doing and they fell down and they worshiped that golden image. Everyone except Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. <laughs> they weren't going to bow down to any golden image. They believed in the one true God. Okay? I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to get out some gold. Now, I'm not getting the metallic gold out like for the, for the crown. I'm just getting out some golden sunset. And I'm going to use that. Okay? So let me just wipe this off. Okay, so everybody bowed down. Except for Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They weren't going to bow down to any golden image. They knew better. They believed in the true God. The true God that we all love and know. And that loves us. Okay, I got me some gold out and I'm going back to my brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. Oops, that's not. Well, that's all right. That ain't going to hurt nothing. I'm going to paint the wall back here this golden color. Okay, I'm going to add just a little drop of water to it. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now some of the other king's workers who were really jealous of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they had such good jobs and the king trusted them so well and he thought they were such good workers, there was people who were really jealous of those guys, didn't like those guys. And they wanted to see them get in trouble. So what do you think those bad guys would do? when they knew that Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego didn't bow down. Why, they ran to tell King Nebuchadnezzar. And they said, they said, O king, thou hast made a law that every man that hears the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, and all kinds of music 
shall fall down and worship the golden image, and that whosoever does not should be thrown in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And there are certain men that you've given very important jobs to, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They are not serving your God, nor are they worshiping the golden image that you set up. Oh, now just what do you think happened then? What do you think happened? I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, he was furious. King Nebuchadnezzar was so mad, he demanded that those three men be brought before him. And he said, I want the furnace to be heated seven times the normal heat. I want it to be blazing, he said. So he sent for the three men and they heated up the furnace. I'm just going to paint that in real quick, right there, just like that. And then I'm going to mix just a little bit of red in with some gold here. And I'm just going to paint the floor with that color. Okay, so now here comes the three men. King Nebuchadnezzar had sent for. And they come and they stand before him. And he says, he, he was raging mad and he said, is it true that you do not serve my God nor worship the golden image? Now think about this. I'm going to give you another chance. You're going to be ready when you hear the sound of the coronet and the flute and the harp and all kinds of music and you shall fall down and worship the image that I've made. But hear me well. If you do not, I will have you thrown into the fire. And who is that God that will deliver you out of my hands? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and they said to the king, and they, they very carefully said to the king, O king, o king Nebuchadnezzar, we are not trying to upset you in this matter. We believe that our God is the true God and he is able to deliver us from a burning, fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand, old king. And even if he doesn't, we will still not serve your God nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Now think about that, guys. Oh, old King Nebuchadnezzar, man, he got so mad when they did that. He, he just flew into a rage. He was so angry. He was so enraged at them that it even changed the way that he thought about these three men. How he thought they were so good and all of that and that they were his loyal people. It changed the way he felt about them right then and there. Now as you can see guys, I'm going ahead and painting. This is the outside of the furnace here and I'm just painting it the same color that we painted the floor. That's sort of a off gold just to make it stand out a little different. There we go, just for a little bit of shading. We're not gonna be too worried about getting it just perfect, that's for sure, just going around it there. Okay, so now we need a little bit of brown. I'm gonna get me just a little bit of brown. Where's my brown? Here we go. And put that over there into the water for a moment. I needed a little bit and I got a little more than I needed, but that's okay. Shake it down there and squeeze it like that. That happens, huh? Anyway, goodness, I'm getting it all over the place. Anyway, back to the story. This made the king so very angry. He was so enraged at him and at the, at the three men he, de he demanded, you better obey me or I'm going to have you flung into the furnace of fire. Well, again, they refused. They, they said, no, we will not. We will not bow down. We will not bow down. Oh, the king then commanded the most mighty men in his army 
to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into this burning furnace. Now the three faithful men, they were all still dressed in their coats and their clothes and their other garments, but the men tied them up and they took them to the furnace. And now because the furnace was so much hotter than normal, seven times hotter than normal, it was blazing hot. It was so hot that as those men tried to throw Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego into the furnace, the men burned up. The men, the army men, burned up. It was so hot as they tried to throw the three men into the fire. The fire was so hot, it burnt them to death. And into the fire, into the furnace, fell Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They fell down right into the midst of the burning flames. But then, King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. Look at him here. He is astonished. Look at him looking in the furnace right now. What? What could this be? What was this in the furnace? He couldn't believe his eyes. He jumped up and he said to the counselors, Hey, didn't we throw three men in the fire? To which they answered, True, King Nebuchadnezzar, we did. Well, why is it that I see four men, none of whom are tied? They're in there walking around in the middle of that furnace, and they have no burns. And the fourth person looks like an angel. So the king got closer to the furnace, and he said, Why, it must be their God. And he called out to the three faithful men, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, followers of the Most High God, come out. Come out, followers of the Most High God, come out of that fire. And at that very moment, they came out. And they walked from the fire, and there was totally unburnt. Not even a hair on their head had been singed. Why, nothing on them had been burned. They didn't even smell like smoke. Think of that. Well, for King Nebuchadnezzar, that was like a big old eye opener. At that very moment, he knew that the three faithful men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, King Nebuchadnezzar knew that they worshipped the true God. Not some golden image, not some fake God. The true God. And that their God had even sent an angel to protect them from that heat. Think about that, guys. But even more importantly than that, he realized that they truly believed and they trusted in their God so much, so much, that they were willing to walk into a fiery furnace and burn to death to prove their faith in their real God. They were so willing. They would rather die than serve or worship any other God. So, from that day forward, King Nebuchadnezzar, he made a new announcement and he made a new law. And he said to all of the people of Babylon, all, not just the people of Babylon, I'm sorry. He said to all of the people, all of the people of all languages, that they could no longer say anything bad about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God, or they would be badly punished. 
And then guess what? He even gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego a promotion and a better job. Think about that. Think about that. How great is that? Well, guys, that actually concludes the story part of our little uh, painting here. So I'm just going to keep on painting and finish up the king because we haven't even got him really started here. That's got a little thing in it there. Get that out. I'm going to paint the king real quick here, fill in his hair with this brown. He's got, I'm giving him brown hair. You can give your king any color hair you want, but this King Nebuchadnezzar here is going to have some brownish looking hair. And then we're going to paint his robe. And we're going to paint the three men's clothes and the angel. Now, guys, I want you to really think about this story that I just told you. Okay? I hope you enjoyed it. And I want you to think about it. I want you to think about your actions and your behaviors. Do your actions show other people that you believe in God? They should. Are you obeying parents? Are you being nice to your brothers and your sisters? Are you complaining? Or are you being helpful? Think about those things. By acting better, you are actually being an example to everyone and showing that you believe in God. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. People notice when you're different and they see God and how you act. Okay, I'm going to give that guy some of the kind of orangey looking hair, reddish orangey hair. Well, maybe we'll just get it kind of blonde right here. That's okay. He can have that color hair too. I'm trying to keep the amount of different colors I'm using down to a minimum. Instead of using lots and lots of colors. Because most of the time I use lots and lots of colors. But this time I'm just trying to keep the colors down to a minimum. What kind of things could you do right now? Think about that. You know, what can you do to show that you believe in God? Think about it. If Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego had just pretended to bow down. And they didn't take action the way they did. Why we would have never known that they even believed in God. In this story, we learn the importance of our actions. Actions do speak louder than words. Sometimes we have to stand up for what is right and not follow the crowd. Now, if you enjoyed this and you'd like to read some more, this story comes from the greatest book that was ever written, the Bible. And you can find this story in the book of Daniel, in chapter 3, verses 1 to 30. And if you can't read it, then you could ask mom or dad to read it to you. But that's the story I just told you tonight, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three faithful men that proved their belief in God and were willing to be thrown into the fiery furnace to show how much they truly believed in God. Okay, now I need to get a little skin tone out here. Here we go. We'll just go with this right here. Color these fellas in. Let me see, is there a little, well, this brush is fine. I'll just use this little brush. It just takes a little longer, and I was trying to hurry it along for you guys. But it is only 8.30. I, I haven't been painting that long. I don't want to take up too much of your time tonight, but I wanted you to join me for Vacation Bible School and to hear the story 
I really do hope that you enjoyed the story. Next week, we will be telling the story of Ruth and Naomi. And that's a really good story, too. I hope you'll join me. <coughs> I'll be putting the tracer on the page tomorrow and also in the event. So you can find it in two different places. It'll be on the page and in the event also online on Facebook. I'm just filling in his fingers here where he's got his hand in a fist. There we go. And you guys, I really would appreciate it if you'd, uh, if you'd share and invite others to watch this. I'm not really sure what's going on, but um, it seems that notifications aren't being sent to anyone in regards to it. So if you enjoy this and you think that it should be seen by others, I would really appreciate your help in helping me spread the word. Vacation Bible School every Wednesday during the month of July. And besides Ruth and Naomi, the following week after that, we're going to learn all about Samson and Delilah. And that's a really good story, too. And then, for the final week this year, our last story is going to be about a queen. And the queen's name is Esther. Queen Esther. So there's lots of great stories to tell and lots of great stories to hear. And I want to share with you what I can. We're going to put tracers up for each of them so that you can paint along with me each week as we do this. I hope that you enjoy it. I know I do. Let's get his little nose there. Right up in between the eyes. They got kind of small little faces. Sorry about that, guys. I didn't think about it as I was making them and drawing them, how little they actually are. But if you're coloring yours with crayons and markers and stuff like that, they're easily colored. Just fill them in. There we go. Let's paint this little angel here. He's a happy-looking guy, isn't he? eyes there. There we go. Get a little more on his nose. There, that looks a little better. There's his hands right here. Didn't make him very detailed, but that's supposed to be his hands. He's put his hands together and he's saying a prayer. There we go. And protecting the men. That's what that angel's doing in there. God sent him in there to protect the men from the flames. All right. Just a little bit around there. His little cheek. Got a little neck right there, just a little bit of his neck sticking out. And a little drop of neck right there too, guys. I see that sticking out there. Of course, you can make them any color you want. Doesn't matter. Okay, now let's get the king's face. Okay, here's his lip down here. So let's color that in right there. Here's his neck. Around his shoulder. There we go. Now we're going to fill in his face. Here's his ear. Kind of funny looking ear, huh? That's all right. He just has to hear with it. Doesn't have to look cute. <laughs> just have to hear with it, guys. It doesn't have to be a cute looking ear. Okay, bring that around under there. Just kind of throwing it in real quickly here. And I will 
published the story itself so that um, well that'll be I'll have if you're interested in that I will send you a copy of the story to go along with it if you'd like the story to retell with the kids or however you would like to go about that just let me know make a little comment inside the video and I'll happily send you a copy along and then that way you can always tell the story again and color it over or you know do it at a later time you don't have to do it right now or you can just actually you can come back and watch this as many times as you want and hear the story over and over you don't even need to do that honestly the story is available for you at any time just come back and listen and I hope you do I'd love for you to love for you to come back and listen and enjoy it again There we go. We got his eye filled in. Or his eye. We got his face filled in. That is not his eye. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We've got all the all the peach color in there. That's all done. Let's rinse that off. Let's give us some royal blue up here. We need a little royal blue. A squirt of purple. Let me grab that purple right there. Mm. Or should I just keep it to the other colors? Maybe just yeah. Don't don't add the purple. We're just gonna go with the blue. Just stick with the blue. We're keeping minimal colors on this painting. So here we're gonna go and fill in these little gems right here and his crown with some pretty blue. There we go. And we're going to put some blue on the inside of here. I'm going to give him a blue robe, guys. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give him a royal blue robe. trim it in some gold because I'm going to put some gold on his hat so I can just trim the robe and the gold that goes with the hat. I'd like that to look a little thicker right in here. Tuesday. I hope you guys are joining me. I'm going to be doing the Summer Paradise, which is that cute little tiki hut on the beach. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Of course, we will have um, our, our, our regular Saturday, too, so don't worry. That's going to happen, too. We'll still have our regular Saturday craft or fun-filled morning, whatever you want to call it. We'll still do our regular Saturday at noon. And then next Tuesday will be the Summer Paradise Tiki Hut. And then Wednesday is going to be Bible School again. So, mark it on the calendar. Join me for it. I think it's going to be a good month. I'm really looking forward to it. Bring this over here on the side a little bit. I'm going to make 
those paint strokes going down instead of sideways like they were. Okay, so let's just put a little bit of blue right here on this part of the robe. And let's say maybe this guy's got some blue on too in here. His may not. It's just a blue. give his little blue outfit a little brown collar on it. There we go. And then let's give, let's go back over here and give him a red belt. Just like that go with his fancy blue robe and we'll make a let's see we'll make that'll be gold we'll make this part red right in through here and then give it a red line right there too and a bit of a purple Kind of mixing that red and uh, blue together there. Sort of made that purple. Yeah, let's give the king some brown eyes. There we go. Big brown eyes for the king. All right. Let's give the guy over here. We're going to give him a golden colored outfit back here. So I'm just trying to use the paint that's already out on my palette instead of getting out something else. So we're just going to fill his clothes in with the gold color. Let me turn it around here where I can get to it easier. paint on my brush. Mm. Don't want it to look too gloppy. There we go. There he is. There he is. Okay, and then let's see. We've got this other fella here. Let's mix some of this brown and peach together and make it a lighter color. And give him that color shirt. This will be just sort of a tan looking color. There we go. They aren't standing out very well because, of course, they're back there in the flames. They're back there in the fire. And the angel, we're going to leave him in white. So if you colored yours in, that's okay. Just get you a little bit of white paint out, and we're going to fill him in with some white. And now I'm going to get out my metallic gold. And I'm going to need a little bit of black. So let me find that metallic gold. Where is it? Ooh, here we go. This is just to fancy it up a little bit, guys. I just like to fancy it up a little bit. Jeez, and I got enough of it on my hand. Well, let's just work off my hand. That's good palette. I'm just going to put it here in this striped area on his coat. Very pretty metallic. We 
got it on my thumb too. Here it is on the inside. There we go, just barely getting it in there. And then it goes kind of just curving off in there. Put it back here. And around this part of the collar of his robe. It's trying to run off of my hand. Well, I don't know how many people use their hand as a palette, but I guess when the issue presents itself, why not? Squirt it all over me, all over my hand. May as well just use the paint. I was planning on using the gold anyway. So there we go. And we gotta get this little spot right in here. between it right there. I'm just kind of filling that in. Now let me tilt this around here. And we're just going to put it in his crown. Get it on the side. Guys, look at this. We're basically done at this point. We're just filling in this crown and we have got this painting finished. And that wasn't so hard. It was actually pretty easy. And actually, guys, I had a whole lot of fun doing this. I appreciate you joining me. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Hope you learned a little something about the story. Hope you enjoyed painting. We're coloring. Whatever you chose to do tonight, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad we got together to get a chance to do this. And just do a little talking and painting together and enjoying. There we go. Let's get this going here. Finish his hair. I mean, not his hair. I'm, I was trying to keep it from getting in his hair is what I was thinking to myself. Don't get it in his hair. Not finish his hair. His hair's finished. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let's put a little bit of gold back here on the angel's wing. I'm just very lightly putting gold on the angel. There we go. That'll make him stand out just a little bit better there. Okay, let's see. I need to get this off my hand. I really appreciate you guys joining me tonight. I do hope that you will invite all of your friends for the next episode. Thanks again. I really had a good time telling this tale. Oh, wait a minute. I wanted to put a little drop of... Here. Man, that doesn't even want to open. You know, you gotta put a dot in his eye here, give him a pupil, or he's gonna be a crazy looking guy, isn't he? And why did that come out all water on that one? There we go, give that king some. Pupil in his eye here. 
where you can really see. There we go. Now, I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate you being here. I do hope that you will join me next week for the awesome adventures of Ruth and Naomi. And as I said, I'm going to be publishing that tracer tomorrow morning. And let's just hold this up one more time. Here it is. Vacation Bible School Season 2 Episode 1 Three Faithful Men Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego Thank you for joining me. I'll see you again on Saturday. Bye.